In our last video, we built the base for the pin setter. That includes the treads that move the pins in the ball that way, as well as the rail that moves the ball away from the pins. In today's video, we'll first start out by getting the chains ready to bring the pins up top, as well as everything to get the pins ready for the pin setter, which we'll build in our next episode. To begin today, we'll first start by making the little lift things that will connect onto the pins to bring them up. The treads have two holes. If we take a pin and put things through the holes, it will be able to bring it up. That should be able to bring it up over and then once at a negative degree, it will let it fall out. So let's build a whole bunch of these. Adding treads in between each one of the hooks allows us to be able to put pins in any section. Now let's attach it to the wheels. First we'll add the green tiles, that way the treads stay at an even level. And then let's build up a few walls and get those treads connected. With both sides on, now we can see that we can lift the pins to the top. Now let's add some height. take a piece like this and attach it to the rod I built just now, we should be able to make the C, or well, at least the 90 degree up here. We still have to add pieces down there. So if I attach that right there, hook that onto there. It keeps it up and the tension of those, because they don't want to bend backwards, keeps it at an arch. I also have that piece which keeps it side to side. Now, if I pull this chain, it'll keep that arch. And here we can see we have like a negative slope kind of. That way when the pin is there, or even still here, it would fall down. And finally, we now have the C. The bottom wheels keep that bottom curve as the top ones keep the top curve. Now, pins can pass under that dividing rod, get funneled into the curve, and sent upward, where they then fall out and will be sent into the pin setter. While trying to fix some of the problems with this, the whole thing decided to collapse. But I took that as a chance to redo it, because it didn't actually work that well. I can't have a curve here, and one up top, without there being too much friction and the chains that just keep falling. So. Let's change that. We will first begin with this small loop. It will just spin continuously, pushing the pins towards the lifter. While building, I decided I want to try a new mechanism up top. Instead of the 90 degree curve, let's try and make a 180 degree curve. That way, instead of relying on pieces holding it up, we can strictly use tension to hold it up. The original design uses two wheels and the piece in between to keep it at that 90 degree curve. This one uses the wheel there and the blue wheel on the left to keep it up. Now they can't fall as they just rely on tension, but I still hate everything about this. After a lot more redesigning, I finally decided to just go with a simple vertical conveyor belt system. But instead of the normal one, we're gonna put it at an angle. That way we can solve the challenge of getting the pins off of the hooks and still having enough space off to the side to be able to orient the pins the proper way for the pin setter. And with the quick redesign of these bottom treads, we should be ready to test it out. The pin hooks are able to go through the gap and pick up the pins. Those glass panels are there to ensure that the pins do not fall off. So let's build those up. Now we should be ready for a full test. The bottom treads are able to push the pins into the pin lifter and then the hooks grab it and are able to pull it up to the top. Those glass panels again are keeping it from being able to fall off side to side and once it reaches the top it goes into that grate which has caps in it where the teeth of the hooks can go through but the pin is not able to. So now let's start motorizing things. 
Attaching a chain to the bottom treads allows us to spin those from up top, that way a motor is not in the way of the other treads or the ball or pins. Now, when it is spun, it's able to spin those treads down there. There's also a slip gear, so that way if the chains down there jam or anything like that, it won't burn out the motor. Here you can see if you hold the chains with pressure, the motor can still spin, but the chains don't. Now, let's fix another big issue it has, and that is that the bowling ball isn't able to get to the other side. Right now, it's pressing up against the rail and gets stuck between the treads. We may be able to fix this by using a chain as the rail. Attaching the chain to a motor, we can spin it extremely fast. Hopefully, we can position it to where the ball gets just under the chains to where it squashes it down onto the treads, and the only way it can go is to follow the chains out. And wow, that actually works first try. Now, let's begin orienting the pin the correct way. First, let's see if we can sense the pins when they reach the top. Using a touch sensor and a burr, we can have it to when the pin passes over that burr, it'll press that button and thus be sensed by the computer. While it does use quite a bit of force, I think that should work perfectly. The pins can go on that lifter in either direction, with the front of the pin facing the back of the machine or the front of the machine. We need to make a mechanism that's able to turn the pin the correct way. By installing that green rod that the pin is about to hit, it should be able to flip it around as the rod hits the center of that pin. Now that we have the pins able to be taken up here and then oriented right, we need to take them rolling down this way, turned and headed this way. That way, they can go into the pin setter, which we'll build in our next episode. What seemed very simple ended up taking a whole lot of testing. I tried different methods of having the pins that got originally turned one way go down a separate channel and other things like that, but they didn't work. That was a lot of testing, but we are finally done with the hopper that adjusts the pins to the correct orientation. So now if we put a pin this way, Onto the conveyor belt, give it a spin. It's able to land this way, which would then stand upright. We take the pin, orient it this way, put it onto the conveyor belt, then bring it up. This part should spin it and it'll bring it down. There we go. With all of the mechanisms done, let's finish this episode with building the walls. I ended up running out of pieces once again, so I already ordered those and they'll be on their way very soon. In our next episode, we'll begin the pin setter. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video. It's always free and if you change your mind, you can always unsubscribe. And as always, thank you guys very much for watching.